Let's dive into a mind-bending scenario. Picture this, a 10-meter pole, a rigid object of considerable length, and juxtapose that with an 8-meter barn, a seemingly ordinary structure. Now, under normal circumstances, common sense dictates that the pole simply can't fit inside the barn all at once. If you were to try and shove it in, the ends would inevitably stick out, defying the barn's limited space. But what happens if we introduce a twist? What if the pole is propelled forward, moving at a velocity approaching nearly the speed of light? Suddenly, our everyday intuition, our ingrained understanding of space and time, begins to falter and fails us. This perplexing scenario is known as the pole in the barn paradox, a classic and captivating thought experiment rooted in the principles of Einstein's special relativity. The twist, the truly mind-bending aspect of this paradox, is that for someone standing stationary by the barn, observing the event unfold, and simultaneously, for someone running alongside the pole, moving with it at the same incredible speed, the answer to the seemingly simple question, does the pole fit entirely inside the barn at any point, yields a completely different result. Imagine Alice sprints with the pole at near light speed, while Bob patiently stands by the barn, acting as a stationary observer. Bob is ready and waiting to instantaneously close both doors the very moment the pole completely passes through the barn. From his perspective, Bob confidently believes he can trap the pole entirely inside the barn, even if only for a fleeting split second. However, Alice, experiencing the world from a different frame of reference, remains absolutely sure that her pole is far too long to ever fit inside that barn. So, who's right in this cosmic game of perspective? The resolution to this paradox challenges our deepest, most fundamental assumptions about the very nature of space and time itself. Let's delve deeper and see exactly how this seemingly impossible situation can be. Let's consider Bob's perspective in this thought experiment. He's standing near a barn, observing the events unfold. From Bob's perspective, the barn is stationary, firmly planted on the ground and he measures it to be 8 meters long. Now, imagine a long pole, carried by Alice, racing toward him at a significant fraction of the speed of light. To Bob, the pole appears shorter than its actual length. This is due to length contraction, a real measurable effect predicted by Einstein's theory of special relativity, and it becomes significant at near light speeds. If Alice moves fast enough, approaching the speed of light, her 10-meter pole shrinks, from Bob's perspective, to, say, 7 meters. The faster she moves, the shorter the pole appears to Bob. Now, from Bob's viewpoint, the pole, which was initially longer than the barn, now fits entirely inside the barn. Bob waits, carefully observing the pole as it moves through the barn, until the entire pole is fully inside the barn's confines. Then, in a swift motion, he slams both doors shut for an instant, trapping the pole inside. In Bob's frame of reference, the entire pole is momentarily trapped inside the barn, even though it's longer in its rest frame, if only briefly. For Bob, there's no paradox presented by this scenario. The moving pole is shorter due to its high speed, so it comfortably fits within the barn's dimensions. This length contraction effect is only noticeable and significant at speeds approaching a substantial fraction of the speed of light, which is precisely why we never observe it in our everyday experiences and daily life. But for Bob, armed with his understanding of physics, the situation is clear and consistent. Motion fundamentally alters the perception of length, causing it to contract in the direction of movement. The pole fits inside the barn because, from his particular point of view and frame of reference, it absolutely must, according to the laws of physics. That's relativity in action, demonstrating how motion affects our perception of space. Now let's shift our perspective and ride along with Alice, our observer in motion. We're about to see how her viewpoint changes everything. To her, she and the pole are at rest. They form her inertial frame of reference. She perceives the world from this stationary point. It's the barn that rushes toward her at a significant fraction of the speed of light. Due to relativistic effects, she observes the barn to undergo length contraction, shrinking dramatically to maybe just 6 meters in length, according to her measurements. Her 10-meter pole, remaining at its original length in her frame, can't possibly fit inside such a short, contracted barn. It seems logically impossible. From Alice's view, the situation presents a clear contradiction based on classical physics. The front of the pole exits the back of the barn before the rear of the pole even enters the front of the barn. The entire process unfolds in a way that defies our intuitive understanding. But here's the twist. The key to resolving this apparent contradiction lies in understanding a fundamental principle of special relativity. 
relativity, of simultaneity. This concept challenges our ingrained notion of absolute time. Events that are simultaneous for Bob who is stationary relative to the barn, aren't simultaneous for Alice, who is moving at high speed. When Bob, in his frame of reference, closes both doors at once, capturing the pole momentarily inside, Alice, with her different frame of reference, sees the back door close and then open before the front of her pole even arrives at the front of the barn, and the front door closes only after the pole's rear end has completely passed through it. The order of events is not the same for both observers. For Alice, therefore, the pole is never fully enclosed inside the barn, with both doors simultaneously closed. The observed sequence of events is relative, it depends entirely on the motion and frame of reference of who's watching. The paradox deepens as we grapple with these seemingly contradictory observations, but rest assured the fundamental laws of physics remain consistent and unbroken throughout this relativistic scenario. Both perspectives, Bob's and Alice's, are equally valid within their respective frames of reference. That's the strange and counterintuitive yet ultimately beautiful nature of Einstein's theory of relativity. So who's right, Bob or Alice? Relativity says both are. The paradox dissolves when we accept that space and time aren't absolute. The pole fits depends on the observer's frame of reference. The relativity of simultaneity means each observer has their own version of now. Lorentz transformations and space-time diagrams help us translate between these perspectives. The pole in the barn paradox reveals that space and time are woven together as space-time. Our measurements depend on our journey through this fabric, the universe is far stranger and more wonderful than we ever imagined.